I'm going to start with a slip knot. Put that slip knot on one end of a long circular needle. 47 inches is ideal. Pull the slip knot to the middle of the needle, middle of the cable, and take the left end and coil it around like this. The other end is just going to hang down doing nothing while we cast on. With your right hand, you're going to pinch the slip knot on the needle, like that. Okay. With the other hand, you're going to tension the yarn, grab the other end of the cable so it's nice and taut, don't let it flop up and down, and with your index finger, hold up the yarn to make this nice triangle. Okay? Now, the needle is going to, what we're, our goal is to put stitches alternately on the needle and the cable. Needle, cable, needle, cable, needle, cable, all the way around. So here's what we do. The needle looks at you, goes under the cable, comes up in the triangle, pushes down on the yarn, comes back underneath, bringing the yarn with it, and then it just does a yarn over. Notice that both of those stitches are angling that way, the same angle as the yarn. And notice that we have two stitches down here. The first one is the slip knot, second one, and two up there, two and two. Watch what happens when we continue. Needle looks at you, goes under the cable to get the yarn, bringing it back, and up above to get the yarn. Now we have four and four, one, two, three, four. Needle looks at you, goes under the cable, comes down on the yarn. Notice the needle comes right back the way it went and does a yarn over. Of course, now you know we have six, three and three, and here one, two, three, four, five, six. So now that we know we have six up here, let's practice counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're only going to count what goes on the needle. Yes, there are stitches down here. Yes, they're the same number as there are up here, but only count those. You will knit all of them, but you heard me say it before, only count those. So, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. When you have enough stitches, and how do you know when you have enough? Well, um, your pattern will tell you if you have a pattern. Otherwise, you're going to learn a lot by experimenting, which is very good. But when you have enough, and remember you only counted what went on the needle, Find the other end, which has been hanging down there the whole time, and most likely when you bring them together in a position where they could work together, you'll find that the cables are not the same circumference, so just tug like this till they're equal, and spread your cast on. You'll find that you have to push things up one at a time or they leapfrog on each other and cause trouble. You're bringing the ends together. And now what you must do, this is very important because a Mobius has only one half twist, which in your needle represents on one end the needle over the cable or the cable over the needle, a crossing. You want to be sure that you have no more than that. So you look at your needle and cable and make sure they're parallel so that a train could go around the entire needle. Do this on a flat surface. I'm doing it in mid-air, which I do not recommend, but that's what I'm doing for the film. And just keep fixing the tracks as you go so a train could keep moving forward till at the very end you will see, in this case, I have needle over cable. It could be cable over needle. It's fine, either one. That means that you have a Mobius with one half twist, not more. And for very few patterns do you want more than that. Now you need a marker. The marker is very important in Mobius knitting because it tells you when you've completed a round. So we're going to put it on the left needle and let it ride around there. So we're going to take our first Mobius stitch and it's going to be this one right here. You can see by the tail it must be our slip stitch and indeed it is. It'll only be knit into once. Doesn't matter which way you go into it. Now give a good tug when you take that first stitch because otherwise you'll have a, a gap between here if you neglect to do that. And now the stitches you're going to knit on the first ring of knitting, because see we do have two rings of knitting here, one ring of cable and a second ring of cable. We'll go around one and immediately flow into the next one without having to know how we got there, which is very handy because how would you know how you got there? 
Now here's what the stitches are going to look like in the first ring of knitting. Like this. Kind of like a triangle. In every case, go just go into the middle of the triangle, pull the yarn through, take it off. Put up the next one so it looks the same. Except notice here the leg is in front, it doesn't matter. You always go into the middle, take it off. Notice here the leg is in the back. Go into the middle, take it off. Leg is in the front, same business. Go into the middle, take it off. Notice how I'm putting these um, stitches up one at a time so they look recognizable and I know what to do with them. Don't clump them up or you won't see what you're doing. One other thing you might need to know is sometimes when you take that stitch, you take it off. If you do this, you'll say, oh my goodness, that's too long, what's wrong? By some miracle, you just take the next stitch and nothing is wrong. So if it gets elongated there, don't worry. If you wonder how tight your cast on should be, I often get this question. The answer is snug, but not a death grip. It should be nice and snug, however. So now I'm going to knit all the way around until the marker is going to show up between my needles on the cable below. Not actually on the needles, it's going to show up down here. That will represent the first ring of two rounds of knitting. Okay, we've made our way around and see where the marker is? It's on the cable ben beneath the needles. And what's this? This is our tail of the slip knot. The slip knot which was knit into down here. Take the tail and tug it down so that it reveals the stitch it was trying to hide from you for some reason. And just continue knitting. Now as you're knitting you're going to notice several things. One is everything looks kind of normal because everything is mounted properly. You don't have no more triangles to go into the middle of. Instead, wait a minute, you have pearl looking at you and you never purled. Okay, that's what you want. This is a Mobius. I would like you to stop right now while I'm knitting and take a strip of paper um, about 11 inches long, about an inch wide, and begin writing along the bottom long edge of it. Keep right down to the bottom and begin a sentence and don't finish it. When you run out of space, don't worry. Take that strip of paper, fold it as a, hold it as if you were going to make it into a ring, taping the ends together. But before taping them together, take one end and turn it upside down. Then tape them together. Now find the end of your sentence, and lo and behold, you have more space along the bottom edge. Keep writing until something surprising happens. When it does, Hold it up to the light so you can see what's going on, and that may help you understand why we're looking at pearl when we never pearled at all. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, we're there. Now the marker is in between the needles where it could fall off. That means you've completed a full round of Mobius knitting. A full round of Mobius knitting requires two rings of knitting because indeed there's knitting out here and knitting here. You always just knit what is on the needle. Everything comes to you. As you begin now to continue knitting, you will see that what you're getting is what I call bipolar stockinette. I call it this because everything from the center up this way, if I just knit every stitch, will be knitting, and everything going down the other way will be purl. And I hope you made your paper Mobius. that will help you understand how that could be. For more information, I do have books two books full of many, many Mobius delights. And if you find yourself obsessed, well, you might have a look. Okay, that's it.